Hello there. In this video, we're going to take a look at an exciting topic. Well, exciting topic for me at least, and it's procedural generation. So this is part of my Bolt unit demos. And in this demo, I'm going to be showing how to use for loops and some other units that I already did videos on to create a procedurally generated plane. The demo is going to be very basic, but you can expand on this knowledge. This time I decided to start with a clean scene. So have nothing here yet. And all we need is to create an empty object. We'll reset the position of it and let's call it generate. In this game object, we will add a flow machine. I'll use embedded. So right here I have prefabs and these prefabs are just 3D planes that have different material on it and I want to create a plane using these prefabs. So let's select our game object and click on full screen and let's start creating a procedurally generated plane. I'll be generating a plane on start, so we're not going to need the update event. For start, let's just generate a single line. And for that, like I mentioned, I'll use the for loop. So right here we have a for loop and in this for loop, we can specify how much times this for loop is going to run. The default right here is 10. So this loop is going to run 10 times. Each time the for loop runs, it's going to trigger the body flow. After the for loop finishes running, it's going to go to the exit. To create a game object from a prefab, we can use instantiate. So right here we can find game object and use the instantiate. There's different options that we can use for the different inputs that you will send. But the only thing that I want to set is the position. So I'll use this one right here, original position and rotation. For rotation, I'm just going to pass in the quaternion identity, which is the same as rotation 0, 0, 0 on all axes. For original, I need to pass in an object and I'll use my dirt. And now if we actually run it, it will create 10 instances of the dirt object, but they're all going to be positioned in the same spot. And we don't want that. We want it to be positioned at a different spot. And to determine the position that we want to place the object in, we can use the index. The index is the current step that the for loop is in. So when the loop runs for the first time, our index is going to be zero until it's going to reach nine. And after that, it's going to stop. So we need to pass in a vector three for a position. And let's create a new vector three. And with this new vector three unit, we can pass in a specific value for each of the axes. Let's go ahead and adjust the X axis. And to start with, let's just pass in the index. So whatever the index is, is going to set to the X axis and that position is going to be used. Click play. And right here you can see that there's some weird behavior that is going on. Now let me exit the maximum screen. If I select the last dirt, Currently, it's positioned at X9, which is exactly the index that we passed in from our loop. But it looks like our planes are 10 units apart. If we want them to be placed correctly, we need to spread them by 10 units, not by one. And that's pretty easy to do. So inside here, instead of just passing in the index, we can add a multiply node and we can use the scalar, pass in the index for A, and for B, we can multiply it by 10. Exit full screen, click play. And there you go. That looks much better. The planes start from zero and they move to the side. If you want to, you can shift them to the side by 50 units. So it'd be more centered. Or the other thing that you can do in the for loop right here, instead of starting from zero, we can start from negative five. And for the last one, we'll go to five. That shifts it more to the center. That's a good start. So right here we have a simple way of using for loop to create that line. Now two more things that we can do is create multiple lines. And then also instead of displaying just dirt, we can change what type of material is used. So let's go ahead and set that up. Let's create more lines of planes in the Z direction. So for that, what I can do is use another for loop, which I'm going to use for the Z axis. And on every for loop for Z, I'll run a for loop for the X axis. Hook it up like that. And to change the position of our line, we can use the same setup and multiply node, connect it to the Z axis. 
and then we use first for loops index connected for a click play and now we can see a 10 by 10 grid so right there we just used two for loops to create 100 objects in here and so when it looks so plain let's create some variations so right here for our instantiate instead of selecting the dirt what we're gonna use is a select unit and I covered the select units in the video number three so under control the one we're gonna use is select on integer and the integers they're gonna have is zero and one for input I'll use a random range and there's two options one outputs a float and the other outputs an integer and I want an integer the minimum value is gonna be zero that's what we are starting it right here and for the maximum value I'll put in three just a quick note the setting for the max is actually exclusive that means that the value three will never be passed out of the random range for the float it actually is inclusive uh, we could have got a three as an output but for an integer it's actually exclusive so we'll never get a three for our output inside here let's create our game object literals so for the first one we're just going to select dirt so for the second one let's select grass and for the third one the default one let's select the gravel that's pretty much it let's click play and see what we're gonna come up with and here we go we have a plane that isn't really that plain the placement of the material is pretty random there isn't any logic of how are they placed and we're gonna take a look at how to place them in more natural way in the next unit demo video so thanks for watching, click on the like button, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.